Good morning, guys. How are you? Uh, my name is uh, Muhammad Talat. I'm a consultant of emergency medicine, and uh, I'm uh, very delighted to be with you today, uh, talking about uh, how to interpret the spine X-ray in uh, trauma setting. Okay, let's start. The first thing uh, that we have to start with is always check the patient identification with the uh, films you are uh, going to have uh, or uh, you are going to interpret it, especially with the area of the backs or bacteria or systems that allow you to uh, uh, to have a look uh, on a lot of films that might be for another patient, that might be for the same patient but in different times. So the first thing is you have to be sure of the patient identification as this is a patient safety issue. Second thing, uh, we are going to play A, B, C, D. So the first A is alignment and adequacy. And uh, for the sake of uh, simplifying thing, we are going to talk about the uh, alignment in the form of A, B, C also lines. The A line stands for the anterior vertebral line and it's drawn just uh, on the anterior border of the vertebral and then the B, uh, B line and uh, it represents the anterior spinal line okay and C uh, uh, is the posterior spinal line okay and then D for the spinous processes line okay and for the adequacy you have to have a good look at the base of the skull and from C1 to not only to C7 but you have to have to be able to have a look at the upper border of uh, T1 as well okay so anterior vertebral line anterior spinal line posterior spinal line and spinous process and from the base of the skull to the upper border of the uh, T1 okay and now we have finished A, we go for B, B stands for the bone and uh, as you know the, uh, there is a special characteristic uh, a pattern and anatomical shape for C1, C2 and this is C1 okay and C1 has the uh, well recognized odontoid process or the dense this one okay and you have to have a look at each and every uh, vertebra and uh, when it comes to this dots it represents the height of the uh, uh, disc between the uh, vertebrae and for this oblique lines they represent the facet joints okay then go for the C C represents the cartilages uh, which here is here the uh, discs or disc space or heights D for the dense, as we said, this is the dense or the odontoid process of C2. E stands for the extra uh, axial soft tissue, and this is very important in case of uh, trauma and the case also of uh, retropharyngeal abscess and so. So, uh, how can we know the normal here? It's roughly at the level of C3, it's 7 millimeter and at the level of C7 it's 3 centimeter 7337 okay and F stands for the facet joints and as we said it is the oblique line that we have talked about okay so let's start with the our patient patient number 1 it's a 20 years years old male fell while mounting uh, uh, mountain biking no neurological deficit and uh, when we try to uh, uh, apply our rules now this is the patient identification as we said and uh, when you try to draw the anterior vertebral line it's okay when you try to go for the anterior spinal line it's okay the posterior spinal line it's okay and these Spinous process line. Okay, I can accept that. And then when we go for the second thing in A, which is adequacy, I think all of us are 
uh, able to uh, notice that we cannot see the uh, uh, C7 and T1. How can we count the the one with the dense is C2? So this is C2, three, four, five, six. I I should be able to see the full uh, picture of uh, C7 as well as T1. As long as I cannot see it here, I can uh, uh, I should ask for one of two things: either swimming view in which the the patient will raise his uh, elbow to the level of his uh, uh, shoulder uh, as if he is swimming or you can go for uh, a CT and if you are not familiar with the, uh, the uh, swimmer's view this is the swimmer's view and this is the humerus of the patient one is going anterior and the other one should be going posterior so we can have a look at the C1 and uh, C7 and the T1 because the overlap of the all these bones uh, is going to uh, obstruct the uh, view of the C7 and T1. Okay, back to the previous X ray and you uh, judge uh, it's normal based on what you are ha only having here in your uh, X ray. Then we're going to have a, a near miss of this patient with this uh, important unstable fracture and or subluxation and this uh, neurological deficit so be sure you are having a complete look at the cervical spine as well as the upper border of t1 okay let's go to the next patient our next patient is eight years old child fell down the stairs and is crying uh, there is no neurological deficit okay we are going to apply the same principles if you look here a for adestogram and adequacy let's the go for the alignment okay well i think you might appreciate that there is some misalignment here and uh, whenever you are in doubt just to go from down upwards i think something is here when you draw the anterior spinal line i think you can also appreciate this so if you go for the all other steps c for the cartilage d for the dense e for the extra axial i think it's also here not well uh, appreciated and the facets f for the facets so i the abnormality here is we are having uh, subluxation of C2, C3. C2, C3. We appreciated it from the misalignment of the anterior vertebral line and also the anterior spinal line. Okay. Next patient, patient number four, uh, 62 years old male, hit an uh, uh, ambitant while uh, driving his car. There is no neurological deficit, but the patient is unable to actively move his neck because of pain. The patient is suffering of pain. So, okay, let's go and apply our rules. A for alignment and adequacy. When you draw your line, I think you can appreciate that there is some misalignment here. When you go for the anterior spinal line, it's very obvious that we are having like a step here in the alignment when you go for the posterior spinal and also here okay see and our bones uh, dense extra axial okay and the passage joints are okay so the diagnosis here is we are having a subluxation of C3 over C4. This is again C2 because we are having the dense here or the odontoid uh, process. This is C2, this is C3, and then this is C4. And it's very clear that we are having here a subluxation, subluxation of C3 on, on uh, C4. Okay. Patient number five, a 19 years old female with head and neck injury after being assaulted. Well, sometimes 
when we are uh, not very sure that the dense is okay or the dentoid process is okay, then we might request having an AB or BA view of the uh, C1, C2, uh, looking at the odontoid process. And uh, because of the a lot of overlaps of teeth and uh, mandible here, uh, we call it an open mouth view or odontoid view because the X-ray beam is shot while the patient is opening his uh, mouth. And uh, this is the AB view of C1, C2. This is the lateral mass of the C1. And this is the C2 and the odontoid process. And we should go for the alignment. And we should go for the distance between the two lateral masses uh, in relation to the odontoid process. Okay, this is a normal odontoid or open mouth view. Let's go for the next patient, 22 years old male, st stuck a tree while he was riding his motorcycle and there is no neurological deficit. Okay, this is an open mouth. I'm, I'm going to go for the lateral mass of C1. It's okay, lateral mass of C1. Okay, I'm going to go for the body of C2. Okay, I think you have appreciated here that we might have as some fracture, okay, at the uh, base or the neck of the odontoid process, it's very clear here. And when you compare the distance between the lateral mass of C1 here and here, it will tell us a lot that or confirm our uh, suspicion about the fracture of base of uh, the odontoid process. We call it uh, uh, type 2 because type 1 is only the tip. Type 2 is the base, and type 3 that extends to the body of C2. Okay. Our next patient, uh, box fell on a head, painful neck, no neurological deficit. Okay. I'm going to go for C2. Odontoid. This is not a fracture, it's only an overlap of the soft tissue. And when you go to lateral mass, I can appreciate that. There is a very misalignment here, very obvious misalignment here, and the same also here. If you noticed the alignment here, it should be aligned. If you looked at the, if you look at the distance between the lateral mass in comparison, uh, uh, the distance between the lateral mass and the entire process here and here, it's very clear that the C1 is fractured. We call this Jefferson fracture and the CT confirmed the displacement in the ring of the C1. C1 fracture and we call it Jefferson's fracture. Okay, 45 years old woman attempting to hang herself. Her Glasgow scale is seven. This is a failed uh, hanging attempt or committing suicide. Uh, when you go for the, again, let's go for the uh, anterior vertebral line. I think you can appreciate that C2 is not well aligned here, but actually the problem is not in the, the relation between C1, C2 and C3, and this would be very obvious here when we go for the anterior uh, spinal line. You see here there is uh, a fracture in C2, and this comes uh, from the hyperextension of the mechanism of injury, which is the hyperextension in hanging. And we call this hangman uh, fracture. Although she is a woman, we don't call it hang, uh, hang woman, actually. We call it hangman fracture. And it's very clear here. Okay. The patient uh, number nine, 30 years old male, in a motor vehicle crash versus a tree. The patient was unrestrained, but uh, there was no airbag, Glasgow scale is uh, 15, uh, neurological exam is intact, complains of only neck pain. Okay, when you go again for the alignment, you might find that there is like a pop here. When you go for anterior spinal line, posterior spinal line, okay, and when you go for B4, bones 
C2, C3, C4. Well, I think all of us can appreciate this uh, fracture here in C4. Okay, C4 body fracture. And when you go C5 and C6, I think also you can appreciate that we have a spinous process fracture here. And if you look at the uh, uh, E, which is extra axial soft tissue, in the C, we said in the C3 it should be 7 millimeter. I think all of us can appreciate that this is more than uh, uh, 7 millimeters. And you can compare it to here. It's very exaggerated. And this is due to the fracture itself. And the conclusion here is C4 body fracture and C6 spinous process fracture. Patient number 10. A 36 years old male fell from a height of greater than 3 mil, mil, uh, meters and the patient is having back pain. Okay, well, we can appreciate that this is the last uh, vertebra was uh, connected to uh, reps, so this is T12. This is L1, and I think when you go again for the alignment, you can appreciate that. We are might having something here, and the height itself of each one of them will tell us that there's something suspicious here, and uh, we should go for the lateral X-ray. And lateral X-ray, uh, we are having this is the uh, sacrum, so this is L5. L5 is okay. L4 is okay. L3 is okay. L2 is okay. Uh huh. This is L1, suspicious one in the AB view, and it's very clear that the L1 anterior wedge, wedge compression fracture is clear in this lateral view, and uh, even though we might go for CT for more details, okay? This is C1 compression, uh, sorry, uh, L1 compression uh, wedge fracture. Next patient, 30 years old male involved in motorcycle crash. On examination, he appears to have a sensory and motor deficit involving both legs and deep tendon reflexes are absent. Okay, again, this is the sacrum. So this is five, four. What do you think about this one? Okay, I think all of us can appreciate that CL3 is having also a compression fracture. L2 is okay. L1, 12. So our conclusion here is it's L3 compression fracture. Next patient, 25 years old female involved in the motor vehicle crash. Patient was wearing the lab belt without the shoulder uh, harness. This is two point lab belt. So we are expecting some uh, fractures here. Okay, this is L1. Okay, I think you can appreciate that there is something suspicious here. Three, four, five. Alignment is okay. So when we go for magnifying this one, you can appreciate that there is a fracture in the body of the uh, L1, so, uh, sorry, L2. So this is uh, a fracture, and when it comes to this type of fracture, we call it chance fracture. Chance fracture is due to flexion, distraction injury, and it's usually common with the two-point slab belt. And if we look at the uh, uh, X-ray, lateral X-ray here, it's very clear that we are having here the fracture from the anterior to the posterior borders. Okay. So, thank you so much. If you have any questions, just leave it in a comment. See you again.